Hello everyone and welcome to this general Adobe add-ons quick tip tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you the different kinds of file formats that different types of add-ons, whether it be scripts, extensions, or plugins support. This is going to be just a pretty quick tutorial as I'm just going over these data types and the pros and cons of each of them from JSON to XML, CSV, or in some cases you can even create your own special file formatting. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel and down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member in our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so down below by becoming a member or supporter. That gives you cool perks like Discord status, badges, um, live streams, and helps us out. And also you can check out the links below to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to see some other cool stuff I make. All right, so I actually get quite a few emails or for people wanting to do jobs that aren't sure kind of what kind of data formatting or data is supported inside of a script extension or plugin. So this video is designed to make it super simple to understand the several types of formatting or kind of data structures that we can use to store data locally on the computer or just store it inside of the, the add-on itself. The first is probably the most common and the most useful across the board, and that is JSON or JavaScript object notation. If you're not already familiar, you should definitely become familiar with this notation as it allows us to store more than just one dimension of data inside of a pretty easy to understand format. This allows us to store everything from like a name and then what the actual name is, basically property, value of the property, property, value of the property, and it allows us to nest inside of itself and go as deep as we need to and have a more object oriented or sort of abstract way of thinking about things rather than just storing numbers and individual variables or arrays that are super static and not gonna be as useful for more complicated setups. I would say 80 to 90% of the time I'm using JSON, even in C++ for plugins, there are plenty of JSON supported libraries that make it super easy uh, to read and write JSON. And then with scripts and extensions, if you're already familiar, all you have to do is usually add a single file or a single line of code to include uh, JSON into your project because a lot of times we use older JavaScript standards um, as those are slowly being upgraded, but that will allow you to easily get into it. And of course, pretty much all of my tutorials that deal with data, writing to files or anything like that on my channel, use JSON. And even with a lot of the Adobe JavaScript that's supported being quite an older standard, uh, ECMAScript 3 to be exact, which came out in the 90s, we are still able to have access to other formattings. Um, and another primary one is XML. XML is basically just the way uh, HTML as well as uh, SVG files are formatted in that they have these tags which can have begin and end points and then allow you to nest information within the tags. The tags themselves could indicate some type of information or the tags could have attributes that contain information as well. I don't see XML used too much in projects, but I have worked on a few that use XML or XMP, uh, which is very similar and allows you to store data in this slightly different way. And there is native scripting support in ExtendScript uh, to kind of convert uh, XML the same way you would with JSON, where you can stringify and parse back and forth to have sort of the actual data or displayable data so that you as a developer can read it. Uh, so XML is not actually as common, but it is supported. And in some cases it may be useful, especially for some really fun things like auto-generating SVG files. Then I would say what takes up the second most, maybe 10 to 20%, the XML is maybe a 1%, but CSV. Now CSV isn't really anything special, it's just plain text, but when you use the extension CSV, you're telling programs how it should interpret that text. And how should you interpret it? It should interpret it by comma separated values. That means that basically you're looking at a spreadsheet and each new cell is separated by a comma. This can be limiting if your data actually contains commas, but for the most part, it's actually super easy because when you're reading a CSV file, you read it row by row. Every time you read a line in your file, you're reading an entire row of the CSV file. And as you go to the next line, you read a new row. And each one of those individual indexes, and each one of those individual indices between 
the, the commas is going to be one of your column or row values that you can then parse and get the information in or store it there. And unfortunately, there's not really a way to read Excel specific files like the Excel SX files in scripting. So you will, if you're using something like Google Sheets or Excel, want to basically convert them to a CSV before you do any of that to make sure that uh, you'll be able to read them. And if you want, you can also use tab separated values, which I'm not really going to go over because it's pretty much the same thing, but CSV is much more common. And I guess lastly, I'll briefly suggest that you can create your own kind of custom data, but usually that data is going to be in the format of JSON. And that's why JSON is so powerful is that it's almost like a custom data and you can make it as detailed or simple as you wish. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. That's the sort of different file data formatting types supported or recommended for all Adobe add-ons, whether it be scripts, extensions, and plugins. Uh, JSON is definitely number one, which is JavaScript, but can be interpreted into many other languages. Then you have CSV or TSV files, which is probably 10 to 20% of the time for me personally. And then finally, you have things like XML, which are good in specific cases, um, but I would definitely most recommend using JSON. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates, as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so down below by becoming a member or supporter. That gives you cool perks for supporting us. You can also check out the links to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to see some other cool tools I make. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.